Good afternoon, everyone. Hurricane Irene making landfall across western Florida, 140 mile per hour winds. We saw the devastation through the Caribbean it left. NOAA themselves admit that more severe hurricanes occur during the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation in its warm phase. Comparison here for you. And you've heard that Irma is the strongest storm ever. Well, here's the whole list, actually. I really want to focus on the 1930s storms, which there are three on this list out of the 25, occurring at the peak of the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation warm phase. Why are we really not talking about longer term cycles? Everybody's talking about Hurricane Harvey caused by CO2, 50 inches of rain, yet they forget about Beulah, 1967, 30 inches of rain, double typhoons passing over Taiwan, July 2017, the last time that happened, 50 years ago, 1967. Let's talk about longer cycles, 400 year, 2000 year, grand solar minimum intensification, solar activity forecast, Solar cycle 25 and 26, bringing us back into Maunder minimum repeat. And as our magnetosphere weakens, galactic cosmic rays are increasing. We've already seen a 19% increase in the New England area of the United States. Now, why would I bring up galactic cosmic rays? Well, they're directly tied to increasing cloud formation during grand solar minimums, specifically between 15,000 and 18,500 feet, which means more intense storms, because we're entering this grand solar minimum, not CO2. This is what they're really not telling you. So let's take a look deeper to see what the forecast is going out into the future over the next five years. And as you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to ADAPT 2030 and click that bell so you can stay subscribed and get the latest updates. And as Hurricane Irma continues up the west coast of Florida with 140 mile per hour winds in category four status. Tallahassee looking like it's gonna be a direct hit along with Fort Myers. We've already seen the devastation that this storm has brought across the Caribbean, literally wiping islands clean. And what we've heard for days now is Hurricane Irma is the strongest, most powerful storm ever recorded in the Atlantic. Yet when we look back historically, it's not. It's tied with the seventh most powerful storm. I wanted to also draw your attention to 1935, 1932, 1933, that cluster of storms in the 30s. Because they match up exactly with the edge of the peak of the warm phase of the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation in the 1930s and 40s. And then we have a strong storm right now, just at the edge of the peak of the AMO as we're decreasing down into cooler phase. Now NOAA themselves admit that during warm phases of the AMO, tropical storms and more severe hurricanes are greater than during the cool phases, at least twice as many. And I don't know why people don't even mention this in the news reports. And this is off their Physical Oceanography Division website. The number of weak storms that mature into major hurricanes has noticeably increased. The number of storms maturing into severe hurricanes, much greater than the cool phase, yet they keep blaming it on CO2. Graphic for you here, right side, cool phase, AMO left side, warm phase. You can see the difference in the hurricane formation right here and the intensity. Another look at the AMO for you here. You'll notice a couple outlier spikes in the late 1870s, 1930s, and draw yourself right back to the 1998 spike that sticks out above anything in this current warm phase. And then look, 1998 Atlantic hurricane season, one of the deadliest and costliest on record. That's coincidental, isn't it? Also, when we look at Northern Hemispheric temperatures and AMO, there's a really good correlation between air temperature and water temperatures of the Atlantic. This goes back to 1850. And for a fun fact here, the AMO also regulates pelagic fish populations. 
Now, what I did have to laugh when I was reading through this, though, Noah even asked, is the AMO a natural phenomenon or is it related to global warming? And they said they've only observed the AMO cycle for the last 150 years. That's not long enough to conclusively answer it because these paleoclimate proxy studies, such as tree rings, ice cores, ocean core sediment samples, have been occurring for at least the last millennium. And then they go on to say, well, it's probably a natural climate oscillation. I don't know, something that's going on on a regular pattern for a thousand years is probably a natural climate oscillation. And then the last line, it says, well, these climate swings of the AMO can be camouflaged and exaggerated the effects of global warming to make the attribution of global warming more difficult to ascertain. Meaning it's harder to differentiate the global warming from the real cycle. That's a natural cycle. Look at the last four days of Hurricane Irma's eye. Stunning images. This is off Go 16, the lightning mapper. And I do remember how Al Gore warned us that climate change would make hurricanes worse. This is way back in 2005, six, just it's gonna get worse and stronger. And then we had this 11 year hiatus of no storms hitting the United States. And then suddenly 2017, he's like, I told you so, they're gonna get stronger. But what, what about that 11 year hiatus in there? What happened to that? That, that time just doesn't count. We just leapfrogged over. And my question is, why is nobody looking at this natural variability in these longer climate cycles and solar activity cycles and the proxies associated with them? Here's a perfect example. Hurricane Harvey, intense rainfall, what was that 50 inches, flooding the streets, flooding the city, inundating the literal edge of the state down on the coastline. But then Hurricane Beulah, 30 inches of rain, 1967, the exact same area. Massive damage there, massive flooding. And the reason that caught my attention is because in July of this year, 2017, there were two typhoons that passed over Taiwan at the exact same time with land and sea typhoon warnings. And the last time that had occurred, 1967. This is a 50 year cycle going on. Are you telling me a 50 year cycle repeated in the Pacific and now a 50 year cycle repeats in the Gulf and they're somehow disassociated with each other. And also on longer term cycles, this go 16 widespread flooding image from before and after. When you take a look at the geologic overview, 8,000 years in the past, these river valleys, estuaries and flood zones with the lakes match exactly to that geologic record. Let's talk about longer cycles of time. The planetary geometry is matching up with something that's taking us back nearly 2000 years to repeat this grand solar minimum that's begun right now, which is intensifying. You can expect more extreme weather. That's what happens with every grand solar minimum. Let's look at the forecast for the solar activity going through solar cycle 25 and 26. At the minimum, we're going to repeat something down into the Dalton minimum through this next few years. And as we get down into 2023, 2024, there's going to be massive shifts in our climate. And then from that point forward, if it does rebound in cycle 26, it's going to go absolutely to a modern minimum, which puts us at the bare minimum of a 400 year repeating cycle. And then if we do want to match up the 2000 year repeats, you can easily see where cycles in time have cooled this planet and warmed this planet. But somehow this never makes the news and it's not included in the discussions of intensifying storms or out of season rains or extreme floods in some areas or extreme droughts as our jet stream shifts. And none of this is talked about. It's always got to be the CO2 culprit. Why don't we look at cycles that have repeated in the past? Tropical rainfall over the last two millennia, what's causing the rainfall to increase or decrease its severity and intensity? This is in Asia. This is Southeast Asia and China. And then we look and we find the same exact thing over in South America. What is causing the increases in precipitation to cause more flooding? and wetter and drier conditions through the stalactite and oxygen 18 isotope record. 
And just as a fact for record here, as we continue into solar cycle 25, the amount of galactic cosmic rays is going to increase 19% over what it has been already. And the New England area of the United States is already showing that 19% increase. California showing a 13% increase. There's other areas of the planet as well showing increases. But galactic cosmic rays are responsible for increasing cloud formation. Although others would say it's ocean evaporation causing all these floods. But these galactic cosmic rays, the zone that they put new clouds up, 15,000 to 18,500 feet is this new band of clouds forming. And then we start to see the real increases in, say, 1987, and each peak successively higher than the last. And this isn't even into the grand solar minimum yet. As we continue into this, we're going to get exponential jumps above. That linear trend is going to be broken somewhere around 2020. And when I say broken on an exponential increase, this is the exponential increase that we're looking for. If this truly turns out to be what is shown on this graph, our weather is going to be so catastrophic and extreme that what you're seeing now is going to be the normal type of event. And if this is all new to you and you just tuned into here following the weather forecasts around Hurricane Irma, I strongly suggest you watch The Cloud Mystery by Heinrich Svensmark. It's free on YouTube, explains easily and succinctly what cosmic rays are, how they form clouds, and why we're going to get more clouds during these next 30 years here on our planet as we enter into this grand solar minimum. The sun is slumping. It's heading even lower in its grand cycle, not the 11-year cycle that we go through, ebbs and flows, solar max, solar minimum. There's also longer cycles on that that are in the 200, 400, 3,700-year cycle that have maximums and minimums as well. This has an effect on our magnetosphere, the actual sheath around our planet that protects our Earth from bombardment of galactic cosmic rays, as well as other space debris, if you will. And the red line is solar cycle 24 compared to the last 100 years of cycles. You can see we're very low, and we're going to trend even lower in solar cycle 25 and 26. The inverse on this is the lower the solar output is, the more galactic cosmic rays that penetrate our atmosphere and cause more clouds. There's been a strong correlation between increased cloud cover, the albedo effect, and rises and falls in temperature. And when we look back at 600 years of time, the tree ring density, what's causing those falls in temperature? What's causing the increases in temperature? And then you can simply jump to the other side of the globe out in Asia and see the same exact things happening. So it wasn't a regional event. It was a global event going on. And what kind of energy does it take to push an entire global event on our climate system? Now, the solar forcing going out over these next two solar cycles mapped out here for you, that orange line is where we are now. We're going to be decreasing in watts per square meter across a different nanometer wavelengths of light. But then when you just couple that all together into overall TSI, total solar radiance, you can see the forecast is decreasing. So what you would start to see are little blips on the radar that make no sense if you're following the CO2 model. Like for example, this year, the increase in ice, 2017 ice compared to 1971 ice coverage, early snows in August in many places across the Northern Hemisphere that are just dismissed by the media. But when we start to overlap longer cycles and shorter cycles, we get something like this. And in addition to the 50-year cycle that we're repeating currently, we have this more powerful grand solar minimum cycle on top of that. But in my personal opinion, I do believe there's another cycle higher in intensity and frequency on top of that. And that more powerful cycle is overriding even these 400-year cycles that we're into now. I encourage you to do your own research. I've linked the resources below for you to get started. You need to understand what a grand solar minimum is and then all of these things we're seeing with our weather on the planet right now absolutely makes sense. But the media doesn't want to talk about this, so I'm going to bring it to your attention so we can start the discussion. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. 
If you found any value in this, please consider supporting me on PayPal or Patreon, and I'll bring more videos like this to you every single week just like this.